we almost have a guaranteed support system. You know, we have in New York, just like you have of listeners, but people are going to come to our restaurant if the next one we decide to call shit stain. You know, <laughs> they're going to come give it a try. <laughs> I do think about things in a, in a very s cyclical and roundabout way, and, and, I, and I, I articulate them in that same way. An artist starts at the bottom of the circle with no knowledge and moves through an education until, until he or she reaches the top of the circle, at which point they know everything that there is to know about their craft and, and about their field and about their medium, at which point they become a craftsperson. It's when you move beyond that and start going back down the other side of the circle, forgetting everything that you've learned, that you come back to a place where you're trusting your instinct and your unconscious voice. I think the past 10 years of songwriting, I started really trusting that unconscious voice more and more and came back to the bottom of the circle. If I'm feeling a selfish desire and I, and, and I, I write a song, because I'm feeling a certain way about something. There's probably a lot of people in the world who would hear that song and it would somehow address something that they're also thinking about. We strive for greatness. We want to write the perfect album. It will never happen, but it, it's, if I've ever had a goal, that might be it. called the Tuscan uh, creamsicle. Sure. So that's a Tuscan creamsicle, is that what that is? Well, I just made it up that way. But <laughs> <laughs> I like vanilla with any kind of fruit. Oh, you man. know, that for me is a creamsicle. Thank you. Rock stars first. I got to say good night to the audience in Naples. And I have to admit they responded properly, but I think they would have responded properly had anybody come out after you guys speak what little Italian that you do and said a full sentence to them like, good night, we think you're beautiful, we love you, good night. And at that point, I am part of REM for 10 <laughs> seconds. It was great. Because there's 60,000 people on the beach outside of Naples, and it's just like, ah! I it must be pretty cool to be you. I love Naples. All right. Kill it, John. All right. Basura? I'm on a green market. We're having a little dinner get-together tonight, so we're going to go shop. Choose whatever looks good to him, choose whatever looks good to me, and then create some dishes. A rain texted with, with, a, with a shopping things that she wanted. She wants olives, she wants fancy potatoes, she wants ginger, and she wants garlic. All right, we can do that. My strategy is the same strategy that my grandma used. I consider it not only my right, but my birthright to have the absolute best thing in the store. All right, pick ones that haven't been pulled open by the other customers. Okay. So I will look and find that. Sometimes it's hidden. Sometimes you gotta search a little bit more. That looks good. Is that okay? No, you know, it looks a little droopy, right? Yeah. If it doesn't look absolutely vibrant and exciting like that one doesn't yeah. either. Well, neither do the, you got all the good ones. Good. All right, I think we're good. Right. Now we're gonna make it a little spicy. These are the hottest in hell. These are the mediums. Medium, let's go medium. All right, let's go medium. So we'll get Ooh, 10 good. red ones, and then we'll get two really hot ones, and we'll play a joke on someone. That's a red seed escape. It doesn't take like the ones you get at the replay drain. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. All right, ciao. So let's choose some tomatoes. You can't go wrong on the tomatoes. You can do, you can smell. When it smells like the vine, that means you're in good shape. We're gonna have to ship these very carefully. Good? Cheap at twice the price. All right. Thank you. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Right? You're just like, it's <laughs> inspirational. You walk through a market like this and you can't see five courses or ten dinners, you're not thinking. You now it's interesting to walk in the cities with him. Everyone recognizes him, but you know, they don't 
really freak out and run up and jump up and down. And they're more like in awe, so they kind of keep a distance in New York from him. He is who he is, and he doesn't look like anybody else. It's really fun to be famous, I'm sorry. Uh, and to be looked at and considered successful is great. For every single person in this world that thinks that I'm successful and great, there's someone else who thinks that I'm a sham and, and just so full of myself and a, a, a walking piece of shit as, as an artist, and that's okay. Make sure those tomatoes, let's do the potatoes in here. Tomatoes, no. Cherries, yes. Ready? Yep. Feet on? Yep. Go away. We go. Give me a voice so strong. I can question what I have seen. Hold on. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Chef. I like the hostess girls. Fancy. Hello. Is this just your spare apartment? Yeah. Nice. So these are the cooks. Wait till we meet the waitresses. Uh, we're, uh, have you seen our groceries? Yes, I have. Uh, How many people are we? Into some of them. I'm making corn encrusted seitan. Seitan. With three dipping sauces. Oh. All right, so can we have some kitchen and then you, you guys come back the, in? Yes. Is that how we're gonna do it? I will Should we keep need this like cold? Twenty minutes to fry. Yes, yeah. Well, so I, I only need go. we'll need ten minutes just to get all this corn out of here. Okay, great. How we doing, corn dog? Not bad. Right now we're gonna make the classic insalata caprese. Just tomato, basil, salt, little vinegar, little olive oil, and these little funny things. And we're just kind of hanging out with a bunch of people that we've become friends with, or I've become friends with in the last couple of years since I've known Michael. A lot of them are vegans or vegetarians. When people tell me they're vegans, I tell them some of my favorite things to eat were vegans. The adrenaline and metabolism jump so high from performing that uh, I have to bring myself back down to earth by doing things like preparing meals for my friends. I'm still coming back down to earth. It'll take another four months or so. The typical amount of time after a year-long tour is about a six-month period for me to really be able to sit down at a table with people and just be a regular guy. What kind of a change is that for you? I mean, are you going to have a love hangover without all these people screaming and yelling at your every song? No, that's not a problem so much. I remember coming off of a tour and uh, sitting around with my family and some friends, some very close friends, having dinner. And they were all talking and doing what you do on a Saturday night. These are the people closest to me in my life. And I was so far away from the conversation, and they were, it was just boring. And I, I caught myself, I had a little bit of an epiphany, and I went, these people are not boring, and this situation is not boring. It's just real. There's nothing real about performing like that for that length of time. Uh, so smart people figure out that it is a chemical thing, and your body is simply responding to something that it's been doing, which is a, the, the, the metabolism jumps, the adrenals go into overdrive, and you're basically in kind of a fight or flight uh, state of mind the entire time. And this, this isn't s specific to pop stars. It, I think sports figures uh, experience the same thing, people that work in theater, people that work in television uh, or on films. They're used to it. And if you don't figure out how to, how to control or how to, how to bring yourself back down to earth when you've completed a project, then it's really easy to stumble and it's really easy to turn yourself into a, a walking mess. It took me a long time to figure it out. I break out into cold sweat when I have to speak publicly. Uh, but, but walking on stage to sing is the opposite of fearful. It's an incredible, incredible thing. What is that? Whoa, that's strong. Let's do it. Pepper and no, it's it's smell a little bit. There's a little coriander in there. Is it? Yeah. This is my favorite thing about Mario, when he puts olive oil on something. Two tablespoons, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, chef, Michael Stipe. That's so beautiful. Wow. Is this the jus? Mm -hmm. That's tomato water. Wow. 
Where's the half with the no cheese and back? It's on the underside. <laughs> Thanks for opening my doors to fabulous new vegan kitchen. <laughs> Mario, you're a king. Thank you. you guys, I think Have we combined together to make an awesome meal. Mm, that's so great. Really. Truly delicious. Yeah. I'm a huge seitan fan. <laughs> vegan Tuesdays with Mario. <laughs> Love it? Oh, God. It's not bad. I don't hate it. If I was a little bird, I would think it was the greatest thing. Are you going to be an L.A. band? No, we're just going to mix there with James Candelero, who yes. we love and Michael's worked with before. The way that he loves to work is so tailored to what you and Michael do musically. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's like, I can't wait to hear it. Aww. Yeah. You know, the movie stuff is a lot of telephone and computer and reading for me, so I can do it from pretty much anywhere. Right. And my contribution is more creative and less of the business side. Of it's it. fun and less of, it's less work to you. It's not work to you. It's kind of fun. And it's really fun. So what are you guys doing tomorrow? I'm uh, busy with the kids all day. We're doing a photo shoot with Helena. Right. And then we go up to Lincoln Center and I'm presenting, just introducing the uh, Four video directors who have released uh, their compilation DVDs with Palm Pictures. It was delicious. That was very good. It's crazy. Vegans can cook. It's quiet now. Photography is my first love. In fact, before music, I was taking photo classes in high school. I think what I've realized as an adult is that photography has been my way of marking time. We're off to the village to meet up with Helena Christensen, who is photographing me this afternoon. We've taken a lot of pictures of each other. We're great friends. Mwah. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. You want to do a suit jacket? I think definitely the, the Rogan suit. The Rogan suit. Wonderful working conditions back here. I know. <laughs> Let's squeeze in some <laughs> I'll just take some of this stitching off. Oh, it's beautiful. You've really been working out lately, huh? No, I've been on tour. So muscular. I love being photographed, I, especially if I know the person, I know what they're going after. I like that collaboration. Yeah, the light here is amazing, actually. There's um, okay. a certain sadness and melancholy okay. that shows in his eyes, and I really like that for my portraiture. I shoot a lot of different shots, and I print them out the same uh, height but different length, and put them all together in one long sort of uh, ongoing line. And it curves around corners. And it's like a, almost like a little story being told in one long strip. I like moments, blurriness. Um, I shoot with a Polaroid camera a lot, and I use the negative from that. So there's a certain three-dimensional sort of old-fashioned feeling to them. Can you just roll around in that bird shape? Yeah, no 